Greetings to all our learners. Welcome to the lecture today. The topic of our lecture is Introduction to the Study of International Political Economy. I am Dr. Amna. I teach political science at the Shama Prasad Mukherjee College for Women, University of Delhi. The lecture will try today will try to attempt to explain how the roles and behaviors of markets, states and institutions and civil society are very important and therefore the study of international political economy which is an interdisciplinary subject is becomes very important then. The lecture will also try to familiarize all the learners about the theories, the dynamic linkages amongst the market, states, institutions and civil society that are very important for individual, regional and global level. International political economy is an interdisciplinary academic field. We can situate it within the realm of international relations and global affairs. It draws inputs from international politics, international economics, cultural studies, political history amongst others. International political economy is also known as global political economy. Thereby, as we look at the nature of studies that go in IPE, it points towards that how within the academic discipline it is an interdisciplinary disciplinary discourse. Now, why do we call it as a global political economy? Because we have to understand that there is a need for human welfare. The states are the key actors in the realm of international politics and then at the same time there has been rise of other non-state actors too. They have strengthened their engagement with international organization and because of the way state exists with non-state actors, there is definitely a need, a need of rethinking, a need of reinterpreting how do we understand the, some of the key global and international issues. Global political economy is international political economy. So therefore, both terms, they are used interchangeably. The term global depicts wider scope in political economy and of course, it points towards being able to reach towards beyond the nation state relationship. IPE as a subject area or what we say as a field of inquiry, it looks into tensions, it looks into churnings of discourse, issues and concepts that are there among the state, the markets and these other societal actors, actors and issues that look into as to how today they are having a transnational impact. That is their impact is cutting across the national borders for with two or more states. Global political economy instead of international political economy, it explains problems such as climate change, pandemics, hunger, global poverty, development, financial markets as to how they are spread over an entire the world and not just limited to few nations. The central elements of the antecedent fields that contribute to IPE first is the political dimension that accounts for the use of power by a variety of actors. Now this includes individuals, the domestic states, the domestic state groups, we look at international organizations non-governmental organization, the transnational corporations. Now, decisions about distribution of tangible aspects such as monetary and products and certain other related intangible things like security, innovation, public and private institutions, how do they pursue different goals, all of it is thought over while analyzing it in the domain of international political economy. Then there is an economic dimension that deals with how scarce resources are distributed amongst individual groups and nation states. Then there are many very depersonalized transactions that constitute a vast sophisticated web of relationships that coordinate economic activities all over the globe. Now when we look at international political economy, we now look at the key 
theoretical anchors the perspectives that are there in order to make us understand the dynamics of interaction and interchange between state, market, civil society. Now, we have liberalism, mercantilism, structuralism. Now, these three key uh, theoretical angles each focus on the relationship between a variety of actors and institutions. Each perspective emphasizes different values, actors, solutions and looks into various uh, policy problems from their perspectives. Economic liberalism implies uh, the idea of free markets, free trade, uh, the heterodox intergenerational liberals, they support more state regulation and trade protection to sustain markets increasingly. The they have also stressed that markets work best when they are embedded in or connected to society and when the state intervenes to resolve problems that makes market alone cannot handle. Ideas of liberalism, you know, when we look at 18th century France through the 19th century famous political economists that we must look into while understanding the liberal perspective in IPE, Adam Smith, David Ricardo, John Maynard Keynes, Friedrich Hayek, Milton Friedman. Then liberal values and ideas are driving their ideological foundations and when we try to trace it, one, one of the most important thinkers that is Adam Smith, David Ricardo, John Maynard Keynes, Friedrich Milton. So one of the ideas that is prevalent in their work was that of the laissez-faire principle, that is the state should leave the economy alone. Then Ronald Reagan also, you know, his idea that economic growth is best achieved when the government severely limits its involvement interference in the economy. Now, this perspective has been debated as the neoliberal perspective. Then when we look at pure market conditions, that is absence of state intervention or social influence and how people are assumed to behave rationally. Then uh, at the same time, when we look at the uh, wealth and power dynamic, there in the uh, mercantilism and economic nationalist principles and theories are important. Mercantilism is the oldest and it forms a, the, you know, a historical standpoint that perhaps uh, it is one of the most important IPE theoretical perspective. The central focus of mercantilism is the problem of security and how role of state and the market is important in providing and maintaining a nation's security in all forms. Mercantilism also called as economic nationalism, it is linked to the political philosophy of realism which focuses on state efforts to accumulate wealth and power, protect society from physical harm or influence of other states. States use two types of power to protect themselves. Let's understand that the hard power that is focusing on the tangible military and economic assets employed to compel coerce, influence, fend or of defeat enemies and competitors. Followed by that is the soft power that is selective tools that reflect and protect a country's cultural values, beliefs and ideals. Structuralism, another important theoretical perspective in IPE, has its roots in the ideas of Karl Marx, but today it encompasses a much broader group of scholars. While most structuralists do not share the commitment to the socialist system as envisioned by the earlier Marx ideals, they do believe that the current global capitalist system is unfair and exploitative and this can be changed into something that distributes rewards in a much more just manner. Karl Marx remains one of the most Im uh, in, uh, important figures in the history of political economy. With the collapse of now communism as we saw with the end of the Cold War, the dissolution of Soviet Union and it, all these ideas, that is the idea of socialism followed by communism, somewhere they were questioned that is the idea of liberalization and liberal democracy is the main plan for future analysis. However, ideas that originated with Marx remain very much important today. Theories that incorporate notions of class struggle, exploitation, imperialism and technical change to name a few. 
they are still very important for analysis in IPE. Structuralism is rooted in Marxian analysis. It looks at IPE issues mainly arising in terms of how different social classes are shamed, shaped by dominant economic structure markets that have existed in a so uh, that is things do not exist in a social vacuum. Combination of social, economic, political forces establish and regulate and preserves them. So, therefore, one of the when we are, you know, after having analyzed the key theoretical angles and perspectives and approaches in IPE, one gets a sense that what are the benefits of IPE. IPE represents today an effort to return to the kind of analysis that has been done by political theorists philosophers before the study of human behavior became fragmented into the discrete field of social science. Since the early 1970s, the mixing of disciplinary approaches has helped in appreciation of the traditional problems and traditional concepts in uh, international political economy and re-emerge, re-examine them resulting in a productive, powerful, hybrid field of study which is called as IPE. The political economy of production international trade policy, if we now take it one by one in order to dwell deeper into how IPE dwells into issues. See international production and trade, they are one of the very important topics in IPE and also have a bearing on other disciplines like global politics, international business amongst others. To review the production and trade structure, that is the set of relationships between states and other actors such as international business, multinational corporations, international organization that determine what is produced, where, by whom, for by whom and for whom and at what price. So therefore, together with the international finan uh, financial, technological and security structures, trade links nation states and other uh, actors which leads to interdependence which benefits which also generates tensions among states and different groups within them. So, controversies about international trade stems from the compulsions of nation states and business enterprise to capture the economic benefits of trade while limiting the negative political, economic, social effects on the producer group society in general. A very important theories that we must always invoke while trying to understand and debate further in IPE is that is that of Susan Strange. Susan Strange makes us analyze the connections and relationship between states, market, society that is to focus on who benefits from complex interactions in the international political economy. Uh, another important work that is of uh, Piera Rivoli's uh, work that is travels uh, of uh, you know t-shirt in the global economy that examines the bigger commodity chain link that is how t-shirts were manufactured at one point of gro uh, globe then to textile and manufacturing at other uh, revel realms then to sales in other part of the globe so therefore that how they uh, you know there's like a larger value chain that goes into the dynamics of trade and production so therefore the questions about that is politics, the power of special interest groups to be able to affect trade rules, to be able to influence markets. So, all of it is very important that is in order to understand the dynamics of world production. IPE therefore gives the learners the freedom to select an analytical approach or combination of approaches. IPE theorists use various levels of analysis in their research work. An example that we can take here is that of Kenneth Ward, that is Man, State and War, uh, his one of very important books, wherein he tries to locate the idea of international conflict at different stages, that is at state, individual and at the at, uh, international level, that is individual behavior and choices, that is when we look at the individual level, followed by factors within the state, that is we are looking at the uh, issue of state societal level and then something stemming from the interconnection of the state, we look it at the inter-state level. When we look at global level, explanations focus on how 
global factors like changes in technology, commodity prices, climate change, they constrained on the opportunities for all governments and society. When we look at interstate level, they emphasize how relative balance of political, military and economic power between states affects probability of war, prospects for cooperation, rules related to international cooperations. When we look at state societal level, the focus is on how socio-economic groups, electoral pressure, the cultural influence affect the domestic and foreign policies of nations, different types of governments and decision making inputs and processes while a state, sh state shapes the way. Uh, a particular state interacts with other. And then when we look at individual level, we try to put the explanation towards why individuals, uh, usually state leaders, they choose certain policies or behave in a particular way. We look at how psychology, personality, belief uh, change, uh, you know, they are important inputs in making determination of choices. Then uh, Susan Force of uh, Susan Strange's four structures are very important in order to understand the arrangements that function in underlying the foundations of the international political economy. Each contains a number of states and non-state institutions, organizations and other actors who determines the rules and processes that govern them to trade, finance, security and knowledge. The production and trade structures really looks into aspects of who produces what, for whom and on what terms. The financial and monetary structures looks into linkages between nations. This structure determines who has access to money, on what terms and how certain resources are distributed between and amongst nations. Then international uh, money flows looks into the financial bargains, the global financial aid, the, no, the monetary structure, the international regulation of banks, cooperation, financial crisis. The security structure looks at the aspect of feeling safe from the threats and actions of other states. And then the knowledge and technology structure, that is how knowledge and technology are sources of wealth and power spread information and communication technology, scientific discoveries, medical procedures, new green energy, all of it comes under this ambit. So managing the global economy since the second world war as we all know that you know once the second world war comes to an end we had the Cold War followed by that there was the dissolution of Soviet Union and end of Cold War which led to end of bipolarity and rise of a multi-dimensional world wherein the idea of power national interest became multi-dimensional at the same time there were multiple centers of powers also and therefore when we try to bring this uh, context into focus the international monetary and finance structure the international money the international finance structure connects the global uses of money and credit and therefore conditions the development in other three ipe structures production trade security knowledge and technology now this structure reflects a complex web of uh, political and economic uh, agreements, uh, understandings, institutions, relationships that help determine the values of different uh, nation currencies in terms of other currencies and establishes a set of rules as to how much, how often, under what terms money moves into and out of national economies. Now, globalization is an important uh, topic in the realm of IPE. It looks at economic processes that reflects the Dense interconnections based on new technologies, mobility of trade and capital. It looks at integration of national markets into a single global market, a political process that weakens the state authority, a cultural process that reflects a growing network of complex cultural uh, interconnections. Now, some analysts, you know, further claim that, you know, when we're trying to understand globalization within IPE, that is an idea that is wherein everyone benefits uh, or that it is leading to further spread of democratic ideas or that it is an inevitable uh, occurrence that has produced a new form of capitalism or that it is a process which nobody is in charge. Globalization connects people by, re, uh, you know, uh, getting the world together with, for, with deeper and more cheaply through an array of new digital technologies, internet, uh, smartphones, increased production, free flow, huge amount of capital in search of 
investment opportunities. So therefore, political and economic systems, you know, free market are also very important in analysis of uh, IPE. That is, when we look at capitalism as to how it is very essential to have a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach in understanding how individuals and businesses aim to earn profit with the production of their investment and labor. Socialism, that is when government owns or controls the entire enterprise or that of mixed economy where we have which, which has aspect of both. So, in order to have a comprehensive understanding of these three dynamics of capitalism, socialism and mixed economy, IPE approach becomes all the more important. Then principal theoretical approaches that when we, when we look at the classical, the Marxian, the Keynesian way, it looks into how resources are getting distributed within an economy. For the classical economic theory, the concept of laissez-faire economic market is important. For the Keynesian, total spending in the economy and its effect on the output and inflation and advocates for increased government uh, expenditures and lower rates, uh, taxes to stimulate demand. The Marxist looks at capitalism as a progressive historical stage that would eventually stagnate due to internal contradictions, a social economic relationship between people in terms of classes and how what is the role of class as an uh, in class struggle as an institution uh, in terms of its reflection on the global economy now when we uh, understand ipe we also have to look that ipe also looks looks into the structures that are guiding global trade and finance one of the structures guiding global trade is wto formed in 1995 and then the main objective of wto has been to help the global organization to conduct their businesses which is headquartered in Switzerland and of course there has been increase in membership of WTO since the time of its establishment. IMF established in 1945. Today, uh, it is a very important economy anchor of the world economy in order to work to secure financial stability, develop global monetary uh, cooperation, facilitate international trade and reduce poverty. Then when we look at Jung Tard, which is again, uh, you know, it is established in 1964. It was there to provide a forum where developing countries can discuss problems related to economic development. Jungtard is headquartered in Geneva and it is concerned with the problems of developing countries, looks into areas of development such as trade, finance, technology transfer, transport amongst others. Then another important anchor of the world finance is the World Bank Group that has been working globally to look into aspects of uh, fighting poverty worldwide through sustainable solutions, looking into international financial institution that provides loans and grants to the governments and poorer countries for the purpose of pursuing capital uh, co uh, projects. So therefore, at the same time, when we are looking at IPE, one also has to look at the multilateral and regional trade blocks. What is trade block? That is an intergovernmental agreement between, frag, uh, between fragments uh, the global economy or encourage the extension of existing global multilateral trading system. Uh, it is a form of economic uh, integration increasingly shape the pattern of world trade also. Regional, by, by regional we imply groups of countries within geographical uh, uh, aspect that protect themselves from imports through non-members. Uh, then multilateral agreements that are, that are commercial in nature between uh, two or more nations, the agreements that focus on reducing tariffs and make it easier for business to import and export. And since they are ma ma among many countries, they are of course the issue of difficulty in terms of negotiation. So therefore, in this lecture today, once we are trying to look at dynamics of uh, international political economy, we find out that how international political economy is an interdisciplinary subject. It has to look into various issues wherein states, markets and uh, civil society integrate. Then th it has to look into various aspects wherein how institutions of the world apparatus are at a, at a dynamic linkage and today how the threats uh, of global and world affairs, they cut across borders and therefore, it is a need for a unified joint action. Then when we are looking at the idea that how, you know, today institutions are in a constant con uh, contact and how this contact needs to be facilitated for a brighter understanding into uh, IPE. 
Then at the same time when we look at a small, small case like global financial crisis, it demonstrates the vulnerability of all nations to combinations of a debt finance uh, predicament. Recently many developed countries have, you know, have experienced a lot of financial crisis because of investment bubbles and currency speculation. Debt is another important aspect of international finance and monetary structure which of course IPE also looks into. So therefore uh, for further studies for uh, on international political economy one must refer to Thomas L. Friedman's work that is world is flat a brief history of the 21st century uh, that's from, uh, and it's very important work then there's Robert Gilpin's work that's uh, uh, the first chapter on the international political uh, political economy of international relations very important to understand the dynamics that go into IPE Susan Strange works that is states and market the second edition followed by uh, Joseph Stiglitz's work that is globalization and its discontents so therefore this was the list of uh, references do refer to them and uh, once again try to look into the interdisciplinary perspective approach the dynamism that go into the working of international political economy. So we hope dear listeners, our dear learners, our lecture on understanding, introducing you all to international political economy was of help today to, for you all in order to understand the contours, the broad outlines that will be further dealt in the realms while we analyze international political economy. Thank you so much for being with us.